Coming up on the Up at Noon Halloween Special, Nintendo Switch's most horrifying games, the most terrifying horror films of 2018, and the best and worst Halloween candies. All that and more right now on Up at Noon. Ah, ah, ah. Hello and welcome to the Up at Noon Holiday Halloween Spectacular Disaster Special. I'm Brian Altano. <laughs> this is Max Scoville, a.k.a. Super Mario and Mr. Snake himself. Kept you waiting, huh? Yeah. Uh, we are back. Uh, this is a very special episode of Up at Noon. Thank to you. Uh, thanks to Resident Evil 2 for sponsoring the episode today. This is a very, very special episode. We're incredibly excited to be back. Resident Evil 2 allowed us to do a special episode for you today. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind that game is out January 25th. You can pre-order your copy today, which I will be doing because I'm a huge Resident Evil fan. Yeah, and they actually sent over the uh, Leon Kennedy uh, statue that comes with the collector's edition, which we're going to take a look at a little bit later. Uh, but we also have a lot of other spooky things to talk about this episode in honor of the Halloween. Uh, we're going to talk about some horror movies, we're going to talk about yep. some candy, some video games, uh, some toys, yep. really just all the above. Uh, yeah, we're going to I'll give you guys a rundown of uh, the best horror games on Switch. A lot of them are on sale right now, so uh, you'll want to check that list out. We'll also be talking about... Uh, a very haunted old thing that uh, an ex-employee left us that uh, Max has not seen and he will be seeing for the first oh, time this will today. be exciting. Uh, uh, plus some really cool books that you should check out. Yeah, so, and we're definitely going to be arguing about what the worst Halloween candy is. I know a lot of people in the chat are saying candy corn. That's up there. Uh, but first, uh, let's talk a little bit about costumes. Uh, in honor of Halloween, or just, you know, for the hell of it, uh, we got our first look today at the Geralt costume that Henry Cavill will be wearing in the Netflix Witcher show, which is coming out next year. We got this really weird little short video where he kind of comes out in the dark, and he's wearing a wig, and he drinks from a little flask. And uh, it's here's kind of like the last weird video we saw him in, where he comes out like with the Superman. It's thing, actually or? a lot like his Justice League appearance, where he's weird? sort of like, "Hey, everybody, it's me, Henry Cavill, playing they didn't a role." My character. Now, here's a picture of it right here, uh, side by side with, of course, Geralt of Rivia. Uh, everyone is pointing out how it doesn't look right because he doesn't have a beard. Yeah. Worth noting, this is based on the Witcher books, this show, uh, and apparently in the books he doesn't have a beard. Uh, there are also no pictures in the books, so they have to you have to read them to figure out that that's. True. Also um, worth noting, um, nobody cares because everyone played the game and very, very few people read the books. Well, so think about just beard, make it look you like you can also he, the, like he, he grows a beard in the game. He yeah. can grow a beard in the show too. That's fine. What I'm concerned about is that his eyes are not nearly uh, inhuman enough. He does not look like a mutated uh, monster hunter. He just looks kind of like he has different. It just doesn't look like Henry Cavill, really. I think um, this will be a lot like Daredevil, where it takes a few seasons to get into full costume. And like he's the, just in like a t-shirt and jeans yeah, for the first nine and episodes. And then the final episode of the thirteenth, thirteen episode season, he one. finally completes his his ursine armor from the bear school of the Witchers. Yeah, he looks dead in the camera and he goes, "I think I would like a beard." And and then like cuts to it, and everyone's like, "Oh I'll my god!" Them. Yeah. No, I don't know. I think this is. Um, we see this a lot with how you know shows and movies are promoted, where they're like, "We haven't started shooting yet, but here is your first look at part of the costume behind." And it's like, maybe hold off until you have something really cool to show us. Yeah. Obviously, we do this, so I don't really know if my opinion matters too much. I don't know. Maybe they're, they've they've got metrics to prove that showing off an uncompleted costume is actually really good for getting people hyped, but. You know, for whatever for whatever it is, everyone's talking about The Witcher. So there, there it is. Um, in other kind of spooky Halloween news, uh, Reese's has unveiled a machine that they've put out around the world. Not around the world, in a few choice locations. It's called a candy <laughs> converter, and it's basically a coin star for your crappy Halloween candy. And the idea is that you dump in all of the uh, all of the candy you don't want, and you get Reese's cups in exchange. Yeah. It is, of course, a goofy publicity stunt, but that's what we talk about here on this show, which is full of goofy publicity nonsense. Reese's Cups are, like, sort of universally polled as the most popular Halloween candy. They're the most d d delicious. You know, it's just one, it's peanut butter and chocolate. It's, yeah, it's perfect. it's like eating a buttery little savory chocolate candle. I it's, love it. It's just perfect. Uh, so this is a great idea. I wonder if you could trick the machine and put, like, eggs in there. <laughs> you like, just put trash in and hope that can't. Yeah, like yeah. a hot I feel hand. like these are going to get ruined pretty quickly. 
doing, but it's a cool idea in honor mm -hmm. of Halloween. Uh, I don't, I'm guessing this is in honor of Halloween. What am I kidding? Of course it's in honor of Halloween. Uh, 30 years ago, um, Will Smith made a song called Nightmare on My Street, which was supposed to be uh, on the soundtrack to one of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. I forget which one. There's like nine of them. Right. Uh, and it's a great, it's a great Halloween song. It's, it's totally a jam. It was supposed to be on the soundtrack, and then it fell through. And normally when that happens, they just they cancel the song. It gets shelved for a while. But Will Smith was like, who cares? I'm the Fresh Prince. And he put it out anyway, him and Jazzy Jeff. And there was supposed to be a video, which they actually shot, but... It got, like, New Line was like, you can't do that. Legally, this is too similar to Freddy Krueger and Nightmare right, on Elm Street. Right, right. you got to shut that down. Uh, and 30 years later, the full video got unveiled. It doesn't actually look this good. It looks more like this. And there's this weird bootleg version of Freddy Krueger, which I think is, is Jazzy Jeff dressed up. And he's got, like, spoons on his hands or something. I don't know what's going on in that. Accursed That's like movie. a zoomed-in screen cap of this, like, VHS rip from 1988 yeah, you can't, or whatever. You can't just show that to thousands well, of Well, that's people. why I made this nice Photoshop, which that's honestly better. looks like the cinematic universe that everyone's waiting for. That's true. Uh, but, yeah, if you're looking for a really fun kind of Halloween party jam to put on, uh, Nightmare on My Street is a good one. It's weird to uh, see Freddy Krueger in broad daylight underneath the Hollywood sign. Yeah, that's, that's, that is true. It's weird. Uh, now, let's talk about horror movies a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you and I are both huge horror movie fans. Um, this has been a sort of like quietly fantastic year for horror movies. I would say there wasn't anything that was just like, you know, It Follows or It or The Witch or stuff like that, you know, where people were just kind of like, this is like the movie to see. I mean, until Halloween itself uh, came out in theaters just a few weeks ago. But this has quietly been an awesome year for horror. And if you've been tracking it, Good, you know that. But if you haven't and you're like me and you sort of like pop up here and there and go like, what should I be watching right now? And you love horror movies. Um, we're going to run down a list of, I think we've got what, like nine or ten of them right now? I was uh, counting. Yeah. Starting with Hereditary. Now, Hereditary is one of the most deeply unsettling movies I've ever seen in my entire life. It is not sort of outright horror as it is <laughs> just like consistently unnervingly disturbing. Um, this is a gorgeous movie cinematography-wise. It is uh, completely sort of diverts any expectations. Yeah. You're watching the trailer right now, and I can promise you that anything you can infer from it is really not they the way things They do a really go good job of kind of, of misdirecting with that. Uh, yeah. That being said, it's... Uh, it's 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 interesting because it's effectively a family drama that happens to be terrifying. Yeah. And there's a bunch of really screwed up stuff that happens. But if you're like the kind of person who doesn't like, uh, you know, doesn't like horror tropes like jump scares. I'm personally I hate jump scares. I just think they're they're sloppy. But I do love things that are deeply unsettling. Yeah. I really enjoyed this movie. Uh, and it was everyone kind of hyped it up by being like, this is the scariest movie I've ever seen. And I saw it. I was like, that definitely has some some frightening moments. But mostly it's just like. It just haunting, really, I would say. Yeah. Uh, um, but most importantly, it's just a really fundamentally good movie. Yeah, exactly. And I think it like it, it sort of plays on the biggest fear that I think most people have, which is loss. Um, and loss within a family is a specifically terrifying thing. And where this movie goes, I don't even want to remotely hint at because it it goes in very very yeah. weird places. Um, and I actually, you know, I, I I found that to be sort of divisive with some people, but I, I loved it. Yeah, uh, through and through. So check out Hereditary. Yeah, I mean, it's on streaming sites right now. We're seeing this kind of this uh, this renaissance of sort of art house horror, and this definitely squarely falls in that category. Mm -hmm. Where uh, and and let's but let's not say anything else though. Let's let's yeah. move on. Uh, I watched Apostle a couple weeks ago. Uh, this just hit Netflix. This is a Netflix original movie. It is effectively about a man who goes to a foreign land to rescue a kidnapped girl and realizes that this place is sort of inhabited by what would be a peaceful religious cult, which mm. obviously never goes the way you think it is. So it's a little bit Wicker Man-ish? Yes. Uh, once you start poking around the corners of this world, you find that there's... There's a little more sort of dark Soulsian horror in oh, that you would cool. expect, um, and there's great creature effects and great oh, sort ooh, of like. Oh, say yeah. no more. I'm yeah. sold. Yeah, yeah. I, haven't, so, I haven't seen this. It looks. I love. I love like movie trailers where it sells you on the setup, but doesn't reveal any of the the, the spoils and surprises. Yes. Uh, this was this was directed by the guy that did uh, the Raid one and two. So, oh, nice. Um, it's the kind of thing that you wouldn't really expect because when you watch those movies, they are just sort of in-your-face action movies. They're incredibly fun to watch. Um, and there are moments in this movie where he gets to flex those skills as well and, and do some hand-to-hand -hand combat stuff and do some very nitty-gritty, you know, fisticuffs. So cool. I love this movie. Again, I will not say a lot about it. It's on Netflix. If you have Netflix, just hit play and watch it. So one movie that came out recently that a lot of people were talking about is Mandy, mm -hmm. which does not sound like a horror movie. I, I guess then again, you do have like Carrie and Christine. A woman's name is frequently a horror movie. Uh, in the case of Mandy, uh, this was one of those movies that could have gone either way. Uh, it's Nicolas Cage in the year 2018, which yep. really 
it's that means that it's a movie, maybe. Uh, Mandy is, I feel like when people see a movie and they're like, whoa, that was trippy, or like, that was like blah, blah, blah on acid. Uh, we waste those those sort of those expressions, and we should really be saving them for movies like this because yes. this movie is legitimately, genuinely bizarre and psychedelic and uh, yeah, very it, druggy. It is effectively a fever dream revenge story um, about uh, sort of somebody disappearing and Nicholas Nick, Nicholas Cage's character getting revenge on yet again another weird religious and it's, cult. It's slow, but it has such a beautiful payoff, and it's yeah. just it goes completely insane. Yeah, it, it takes a minute to get where it needs to go, get, and then once it really gets moving, it doesn't stop until the end. Um, it's gorgeous. It feels like a '70s mm -hmm. album cover. It's it's, it's directed by uh, Panos Cosmatos, who did uh, Beyond the Black Rainbow, mm -hmm. and is actually the son of I think George P. Cosmatos, who did the Stallone movie Cobra and a bunch of other uh, very bad '80s films. Yeah, so uh, you can rent this one right now too. Um, it's yeah, it's just. Like like we said, Nicolas Cage, like it feels weird to be like, oh, let's champion one of that guy's movies right now because he's had a weird couple of years of just sort of doing whatever. Uh, but this is a special one, so please mm -hmm. pay attention and watch it. Now, one movie that everyone was talking about was A Quiet Place, uh, yeah. which was, I, I would say that was the closest thing. I think that and Hereditary are kind of the, the get-outs of this year. Like yes. they're the ones that everyone was talking about. A Quiet Place, uh, I don't think this is really, uh, this is, yeah, this isn't a spoiler. It's a, it, there's monsters that hunt by hearing things, mm -hmm. and so... Uh, what is the weakness? So they all have to, everyone has to be quiet. So everyone has to be very quiet. This was one of the, this was one of the most interesting movie-going experiences I've ever had. Like yeah. this was, I was, we were, you'd sit in the theater, and it was, it's not in theaters anymore, unfortunately, but if there's ever a screening, go see it, because everyone just gets dead silent. Mm -hmm. And everyone is just on the edge of their seat. The sound design is phenomenal. Yeah, now that you can rent this at home, uh, I urge you to watch it either with some great surround sound or some headphones on, or just in a dark, quiet room where people aren't talking or looking at their phones or munching on food. Um, because it will make you like sort of appreciate and fear every bite of popcorn you're I, eating. I would say invite over your loudest and most fearful friends, yeah. and you'll have a really interesting experience. Uh, but yeah, this was this was cool, and I think they're already fast tracking a sequel. I don't know what that's going to be. Yeah, which is interesting. Um, hmm. Yeah, yeah, good to uh, know. Uh, so, Max, you saw Overlord, right? Yeah, actually, Overlord, uh, you know, full disclosure, Overlord sponsored our New York Comic Con coverage, which I was doing back, I, I don't know, a month ago or something like that. Uh, Overlord is produced by J.J. Abrams, and it is, uh, for a second, people were uh, saying it was in the Cloverfield universe. I don't think it actually is. Uh, it is the closest thing we have to a Call of Duty Zombies or Wolfenstein movie, and I say that. Just that is earnestly what it is. It is um, a, bu a bunch of uh, World World War II paratroopers jump into uh, into uh, Nazi Germany, and uh, they have to uh, they they come across some some terrifying occult stuff, and it just goes completely bonkers. Um, I was genuinely surprised by this movie. I, I mean, I, I didn't think it would be bad, but I went in with completely blank slate. I don't think I'd totally. even seen a trailer, and it is. Uh, it is badass. Also worth noting, uh, obviously I'm a, I'm a fan of Metal Gear. Um, Kurt Russell's son is in this movie, Wyatt Russell. Uh, if they were making a Metal Gear movie, I, he fully has my vote to play Snake Plissken. Mm. And if they get his dad to play Big Boss, you know, because Snake was based on Snake Plissken. Right. Totally into that. Uh, this movie comes out, I think, November 9th, so it's not even out yet, officially. Uh, it kicks ass. It's super fun. I oh, think you if saw you're, it way early. Yeah, I saw it super early. They're nice. doing a lot of early screenings. I think they're trying to, to build up some buzz, but it's... Uh, it's just a really, it's just a really fun kind of gruesome action horror mm -hmm. movie, uh, and it's. I hope it. I hope it does well because it yep. was, you know, a grand old time. Now, obviously, uh, Halloween just came out. Jamie Lee Curtis is sort of like sequel, reboot, preboot, requel to the original Halloween. Uh, it sits in the timeline weird. Uh, I actually haven't seen this yet, and neither have you. Mm -hmm. But we'd be remiss to make this list without adding it. Uh, it's. It got an amazing review from IGN and every other outlet, um, and it's actually. Uh, I think it was the best. Movie ever uh, opening for a, like a female lead, like and, wow. and like this, and I think the biggest horror movie opening for October ever. Um, so it looks like it's a big deal. Uh, it's very gorgeous. It sort of takes a lot of the tropes from the original and brings them in new directions. If you haven't seen the original Halloween, um, it's sort of hokey, but it's worth rewatching because it will remind you that uh, this is kind of where horror movies of its ilk started. Yeah, I mean, it's one of the first slash movies. I've actually been watching it. I just I just finished it this morning. I, I like started it on, on a plane and then I lost the 48 hour rental thing and it was a whole pain in the ass. Uh, it's John Carpenter who did um, you know Escape from New York. He's one of my favorite directors. I was never into his, his horror stuff so much. Uh, but it's fascinating to see sort of the 
the guts of every sort of slasher film since then are all right. in there. Uh, and also just the, the simplicity of Michael Myers, who kind of, they kind of lost the thread along the way and got, they went all over the place and got very strange with it. But it's cool to see, you know, fans of the original uh, kind of revisiting that that first movie and being like, let's make a sequel to that first one that got it really right and yeah, try totally. to do the best thing they can. So I'm I'm excited to see this. Apparently John Carpenter likes it. He did the score too, which is badass. Yep. Uh, so yeah. Uh, way hokier film, and weirdly <laughs> enough, another Nicolas Cage movie is Mom and Dad. Now, Mom and Dad is one you probably don't know about because it didn't really get a major release, um, and it, I don't think it was even theaters for more than a weekend, if at all. Uh, Mom and Dad is effectively a zombie movie about uh, kids killing adults. All of the adults in this town effectively become monstrous, murderous people, and the children have to take them huh. down. Um, and this is odd because you don't really expect to see... Uh, this sort of violence with so, this, so this, they, this type of cast? They kind of took that first scene from the, the uh, Zack Snyder, Dawn of the Dead, yeah. and just stretched it out? Yep. That yeah. sounds cool. That's yeah. like one of the coolest parts of that movie. Mm -hmm. uh, nice. Yeah. And so yeah, this is uh, basically just a. It's. I think they describe it as like uh, Home Alone on bath salts. Ooh. Most of the second half of the film effectively takes place in a f just a few small environments. Nicolas Cage is one of the dad. Is he's a dad in the movie? And he's the titular dad. The titular dad in Mom and Dad, and uh, he's trying to kill his own children. Gross. Amongst others. Now, now so. would you say that Nicolas Cage gives like a measured, even, and very grounded performance? Definitely not. Hell yeah. Say, that's he's, what we want. I would say he goes full cage in this one, and uh, he's out of his mind. So Sweet. also, the way this this movie's shot is really intense. I really dig it. Um, another one that you probably didn't track is Revenge. I believe this was a French movie. Yes, this um, is incredibly French. Yeah, and so, uh, Max, you actually shut it off after the first few minutes because of the subtitles, but they're only there no, for a little while. N well, no. I, I Initially, I shut it off for the subtitles. I eventually shut it off because it really upset my wife for some uh, content-related reasons, but it's, it's a, it's a revenge story. Right, right, right. Uh, and it's about a woman who's getting revenge on some some dudes, some yeah, bad these, dudes. these disgusting businessmen who are just awful people. Bad things happen and she, you know, attempts to pick them off one by one in the desert. Uh, this movie is shot so incredibly well. It does really great things with light and color um, in, in, in ways I haven't really seen a lot of movies do. A lot it's, of the close-up shots are just stunning. They do a really good job of, there's a lot of stuff in there that's really gross in like a like in a very not not supernatural way. Yeah. Like it's not a gruesome way. Like there's a shot there of a guy eating like a, a candy or something. Yeah, and it's just there's a lot of that where it's just it makes you hate these people yeah. so much yep. without really beating you over the head with it. I mean, yep. sometimes they do, but it's uh, yeah, this one was uh, it's gorgeously shot. But yeah, and finally, Ghost Stories. Uh, I believe this came out in the UK, and it might have been a TV movie, but it did get a small theatrical release. It's effectively Martin Freeman and a bunch of other characters, uh, all centralized around four independent short stories. So sort of like the Twilight Zone movie or something like that. Ooh, I love that. Um, and they're all woven together by this one central character who is effectively a ghost hunter, and he searches the paranormal. And by going on these sort of like cases, he discovers, you know, very weird things. And the fourth case is effectively his own, of him being like, how do I live in this world? That sounds great. Um, and so there's really cool things that sort of like, the second you're like, oh, this story's going on for too long, it stops and a new one begins. That's my favorite thing about vignette style yeah. movies is that you're just, you're, you get, it's like one of those like value packs of cereals. Yeah. I mean, it's like fun size candy. Yeah, it's totally. exactly It's Halloween candy in movie form. Uh, I think I just remembered one that we forgot about here. Which one? Uh, the Ritual. Oh God! There's a was Netflix that this movie. Year? Yeah, I think I think so. Yes, the Netflix, Ritual. Netflix original movie called The Ritual. Uh, go into that. Just put it on. Watch it. It is so good. Yeah, it's it, about a bunch of friends on a camping trip, uh, and things go just very awful. As oh. they, all of these movies are like blah blah blah. Does this, and then things go bad. But this one was really cool, and I I kept expecting the other shoe to drop and for it to be corny. Um, but a lot of the special effects and... It holds it together yeah, really well. Very specifically, the design of some of the things that yeah. they are facing become really, really interesting. Uh, and it, again, it goes places. So, mm -hmm. yeah, those are the X amount of best horror movies you should watch this year. If there's any we missed, let us know in the comments below, uh, and we will watch them. Yeah, what was your favorite fans. horror movie this year? Mm -hmm. Was it Slender Man? I don't think so. We didn't yeah. name that one. No, I don't think it was yeah. Slender Man. Was anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, obviously, we are sponsored this week by Resident Evil 2, which is out January 25th. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a collector's edition that they are putting out, uh, which is gorgeous and comes with this fantastic uh, Leon Kennedy statue. Yeah. Uh, and this is, I think, this isn't, it's not to scale or doesn't say it's to scale. I believe it's one six scale. So if you collect 12 inch action figures, it would fit in really nicely with that. Uh, the gun actually comes out of his hand uh, and I think fits into the holster. 
Um, this is this is like a prototype. We have to give this back to him. So I don't I don't want to mess around with yeah, it too we don't much. Break it. it's but, got, it's, but it's got the flashlight in his hand and everything. Yeah, the flashlight comes out. You um, can actually put it on his belt. I think the details on this thing are awesome. Like the the texture work uh, on the sculpt is just incredible. It's got a lot of really great paint ops just around the belt, like the very sort of weathered leather look. The belt's even like, like a separate piece. You can take um, his walkie talkie out. Yeah, I think this thing is just stunning. Yeah, um, this is rad. Le- Leon Kennedy is one of my favorite video game characters of all time. If you've ever seen me do a single show on IGN, you've heard me mention Resident Evil Four which is one of my favorites. I found out it's coming to Switch, and yeah. I just freaked out on social media. Uh, now, the Collector's Edition also comes with the soundtrack and uh, a Collector's Art Book, as well as the game and the DLC pack voucher. We've got an image of it right here, of all that stuff. Uh, but, you know, if you can't wait until January 25th, I wanted to talk a bit about some of the other toys that are out there in the world of Resident Evil collecting. Uh, weirdly enough, it is kind of hard at this point exactly in time to collect Resident Evil stuff. Yeah, there was an action figure line back in the day. Yep, Toy Biz they, did a really cool one. Yeah, they uh, ended up being like super rare. They're, they definitely get pricey. They're very cool. I had one, uh, I think it was Claire, and it came with a spider, and you pushed a button, and the spider's ass would pop open, and it would launch these little confetti streamer things. Look, we've all been was, there. Okay. We've, all had, we've all had that problem. I understand mm-hmm. spider. It's all right. Talk uh, to your doctors. But we took a look at some of the other stuff that's out there right now, uh, and so here's, uh, you know, what what are you buying? Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe this stuff. What um, are you buying? Yeah, there you go. Uh, so uh, Got some rare goods on sale for you, stranger. Obviously, having chemical weapons in your home is not great, but perfectly safe uh, replicas of chemical weapons are always good, or biological biohazard weapons, obviously. I like these uh, a lot because these are the kind of things that are like cool office toys that you can put on your desk and people will be like, I, is that just like... Are you, are you is okay? That, yeah. What, what is that? Yeah, so these just came out. Uh, these are T-Virus and G-Vaccine prop replicas. They're, uh, it's about 50 bucks. Uh, you know, shop around. You maybe find less or more. If you, if you decide you want to spend more, that's always an option, I guess. Uh, but they're they're nifty. They're like uh, I can't I can't tell if they're I guess they're going for like for for game game grade accuracy. Mm-hmm. There was a uh, Resident Evil game that came out a couple years ago, by the way, where Capcom sent us these promotional pens that looked like syringes. Oh, those were those? great. Those yeah, were really cool. I wish yeah. I still had. I wish mine. they sold those. I know. Uh, now moving on. Obviously, toys are more fun than uh, fake disease. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's a real cutie. Little Chris Redfield Nendroid. Nendroid is a long-running. It's effectively um, high-end Funko Pops, if you will. Uh, this is about sixty bucks. It's on Amazon. Some close-up photos here. He comes with a big old, big old rocket launcher and a knife, and you can put him in all sorts of uh, fun poses. Uh, and you know, it's you know, sixty bucks is is pricey for something cutesy, but that's you know, that's kind of what you're looking at with any kind of high-end uh, collector-grade yeah, stuff. You and I have talked about Nendroids a lot on this show. I, I like them. I think they're really cool in terms of like if you're if you want something that's sort of like short and squat and super deformed and looks better than your average Funko Pop. I like that you can pose them too. Yeah, these are more money, but they're like, you know, they've and they've got these chunky little legs and accessories and you can, you know, some of them have faces you can pop out and stuff like that. So yeah. they're really fun. I have a couple of these on my desk. I don't actually have one yet. I keep kind of waiting to bite the bullet. I bought my horrible wife a bunch of those uh, boys from that figure skating anime. They were always kissing each other. and Urine on ice? Poor, yeah, urine on ice, the poor Tagatsu boys or whatever. Yep. Anyway, moving on. Back to Resident Evil. Um, <laughs> Hot Toys, one of the finest toy companies out there. If you can afford them, you know you get you get what your you get your money's worth. Uh, yep. There is an, there's a bunch of Resident Evil ones. I, I thought I'd pull up uh, Ada Wong here. Uh, Holy this crap. is yeah, this is about three hundred bucks. You're gonna have to shop around to find it because it's from a few years ago. But she comes with like I, like obviously this beautiful ornate dress uh, and then all these kick-ass weapons. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is yeah, it's a three hundred dollar Ada Wong figure. So this is if awesome. That's your, if that's your jam, that's. That's an option out there. This uh, is like completely screen rep, uh, like authentic from oh, totally, like the yeah. stuff that she looks like in the Ada missions in Resident Evil 4. She gets that uh, cool Tommy gun in that game and mm-hmm. everything. Um, that is just spot on. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, there's uh, a Chris Redfield Play Arts Kai. Uh, weirdly Ooh. enough, uh, Play Arts Kai is a toy line that is made by Square Enix, but they frequently will put out uh, toys from other like other publishers' properties. Right. Uh, and they have a bunch from Resident Evil. Uh, the Chris Redfield one, I think you can find online for about 100 bucks. I found this on Amazon. Uh, that's the weird thing about, about RE collecting right now is that there's not a ton that's like kind of just available immediately right now. Yeah, you got to um, poke around a little bit. NECA did a ton of uh, kind of 7-inch uh, scale action figures, but all of those apparently are really rare because they are uh, they cost about as much as this guy does. Yeah. But this is like a 9-inch action figure. This is a big, beefy toy. Uh, so if that's and your jam... I believe jam, that, that's the Resident Evil 5 I think model? so, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's from a few years ago. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, hopefully hopefully with uh, with RE2 coming out, we're going to get some more, more cool toys. Uh, so. Most recently, uh, there was a Nemesis arcade block figurine that came out. Uh, arcade, blo- arcade Block was like a one of those like subscription box things, and uh, you can find the figurine on its own. I just love his design. 
Oh, it's so just, it's like a loot crate type thing? It's like, yeah, it was part of that, and I think it's just, it's, this is just 20 bucks on Amazon right now, so. Yeah, this guy is so great because he just reminds me of being stalked in that game. Like, it's yeah. just, it's so spot on. Well, also, I just love that, like, he doesn't, he doesn't need a rocket launcher. He's very scary without the rocket launcher. Yep. Like, I always expect, like, a, like, you know, just a regular man to have a rocket launcher, and this yes. guy's a walking nightmare. Uh, so, yeah, like we said, uh, you know, those are all uh, sort of older, older figures and collectibles that are out there, but... If you're looking for RE stuff, uh, the collector's edition of the game is out January 25th. That, that is that. All right. Yes. Uh, okay, Nintendo Switch. You've heard of it. It's a very popular system. Everyone loves it. This fall, you'll be able to play games such as Pokemon and Smash Brothers. Fun for the whole family. And children and babies and adults all around will come together to join around the Nintendo Switch. Your parents help you set it up. But in the meantime, while the kids are sleeping, there are a bunch of really awesome horror games on Switch. And it's not really a system you would identify with that. Uh, right now, to celebrate the Halloween spooking season, there are a bunch of games on sale on Switch. And you'll be able to go through this list right now and pick some of them out. I'm going to give you a very brief rundown of some of the best and my favorite horror games on Nintendo Switch right now. Starting with Outlast Bundle of Terror. Now, Outlast uh, launched it's really, it's really, on Switch. It's a really cute name. Outlast Bundle of Terror. Bund little Bundle of Terror. Good, right? little, little Bundle. Have you played Outlast before, Max? Uh, I messed around with the first one. I yeah. think we did like a, one of those, like, how scary is it kind of yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so this game is twelve forty nine right now, and it's effectively a first-person survival horror game about hiding around a, a sort of mental institution or a psychiatric ward, like a, a spooky old hospital, where some sort of monstrous creature is stalking you. Um, it gets like if, if this was like a really big deal with sort of let's play streamer culture a couple years back because like it actually gets really mm -hmm. scary and there's there's a lot of hiding there's a lot of poking around the corners. There's something I like about this. This is I guess you could say technically a first person shooter. Kind and of. And yeah. you're shooting with a video camera. Yeah. Like you don't actually I don't think you get guns. Do you get? No, I, you get. I think you get like rudimentary weapons. Okay, to yourself, but you don't. But. You're pretty much like you're sneaking into this mental hospital with a camcorder. Yeah, and you've got to like use the night vision, and you've got to like try to you know conserve your battery. Yep, and it's it that makes it so much more terrifying because you're completely powerless. You yeah, I totally agree. It sucks. Um, this was uh, it's one of the scariest games on consoles and on Switch. It's got all of the DLC bundled in. There's also Outlast 2 available on Switch. Um, I personally like the first one better, but the second one does some cool things too. But they're both there. Uh, Bundle of Terror is only twelve forty nine right now. That's like right now this week. I don't know if that's going to change when Halloween is over and we're heading into turkey season again. But right now, Outlast Bundle of Terror twelve forty nine. Check it out. Uh, next. This is a game I actually didn't really know about until a couple weeks ago that I did some digging on and I played on my entire flight to Austin the other day. It's called Detention and it's very sort of like um, like Japanese horror. It's uh, the entire game looks kind of hand drawn as you can see right here. It's very like it's very beautiful looking and it's about uh, a character that kind of stays late after school and. Um, can't leave his school. And so him and this girl are stuck it's, there. That's horrifying. And things start to get very, very creepy. Um, and there's just like terrifying, weird iconography everywhere. It's side scrolling, so it's got this really interesting effect where you will walk by monsters and you will have to hold your breath so they don't catch you. And so uh, hmm. by doing that, you hold down a button and you'll see your sort of character like screen fill up in blue and red and stuff like that. And if you breathe, they'll come and kill you. Um, but it's also got a little bit of sort of like Tim Schafer like adventure game elements to it where there's uh, a lot of cool sort of like puzzles and like uh, mild Resident Evil type stuff of like finding keys and going downstairs and opening them and uh, unlocking, you know, contraptions. I've heard like a lot of good stuff about this game. I need, to, I need to check it out. Yeah, it's really special and I had no idea it was on Switch. Like, you know, like everything else, there's hundreds of, literally a thousand plus games on Switch right now and uh, it's hard to cut through the fat, so we thought we'd help you out here. Uh, another very scary, sort of hand drawn y uh, side scrolling game on Switch that is rather spooky is Salt and Sanctuary. Salt and Sanctuary, the easiest way for me to explain it to you is Dark Souls, but 2D. But I think that doesn't do it enough justice. Um, Salt and Sanctuary effectively lets you start off picking a character class and then taking on gigantic disgusting enemies uh, in this very sort of labyrinthian side scroll. And this isn't, I mean, someone's going to look at this, they're not going to be like, this is a horror game. This is a game where it's scary because you go around a corner and there's a massive boss fight that you're totally underpowered for, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. And, the, you know, there's like, there's, you know, wolves and bats and bloody disgusting things gnawing at you. So it's got some traditional horror elements to it. But really the scariest things about this game are, are hoping not to die. Uh, there's a lot of traps and just 
nightmare cutlery that will slice you apart in this game. Um, and it's really cool. I think what separates it from different, uh, like from Dark Souls games, is that you can't just run around an enemy for the most part. You can like roll past them, but yeah. they'll, but they'll be there to kill you because it's interesting. It's two D. I'd be curious to see what people make of this uh, after Dead Cells. Yeah. It's kind of like a, this was one of the first sort of uh, Souls likes to come out that was that was 2D. I remember this was like yep. back at PAX like 2013 or something. Uh, next, Resident Evil Revelations One and Two are both on the system, which is sort of a feat because these are like you know these are big boy console games, uh, but they run perfectly well, on the Switch. The first one came out on 3DS first. It right? did, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I actually prefer Revelations Two. It's got this sort of character swapping ability between two main characters who both have their certain traits, but specifically this has like side modes that are sort of like mercenaries from Resident Evil Four that are a lot more arcadey and level based and you can kind of grind and level up and I found myself playing a lot of this over the last few weeks just randomly. Um, I guess I'm in the mood to play hor horrible stuff. Um, so uh, Resident Evil Revelation 2, again the first one's there too. Some people pr prefer that one. I like first this one one's, a little bit better. First one's more kind of like conventional Resident Evil, like you're just on a boat and you're yeah. you know, by yourself, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. So um, yeah, these are there too. Uh, that one is only $13.99 right now, so check that out. Um, the Mummy Demastered. <laughs> Why on earth would I put a licensed game based on a horrible Tom Cruise movie on this list? Because, uh, miraculously, it's good. That is the silver lining. Yeah. In most cases, games based on uh, movies are not great, and movies based on games are not great. But this one was made by WayForward, who has sort of a pedigree in making awesome, badass, side-scrolling 2D games that are very Metroidvania-y. Uh, they made an awesome game about Alien. They made a great Contra. They've made a bunch of uh, the Shantae games. They do really cool stuff. Um, this game is like really good looking and again has very little to do with the movie which is great because I didn't see the movie and borderline <laughs> There's a mummy to. and you got to fight it. That's yeah. That's kind of it. And <laughs> so uh, the way this game unfolds is really cool. You get items and weapons that help you get into separate areas and stuff like that. The soundtrack is like very old, old school Super Nintendo. The graphics are awesome. Um, there is not a 2D Metroid game on Switch right now. I hope there will be That's someday. bonkers. But in the meantime, there's this and it'll let you kill spiders and monsters. This one has a cool little mechanic though where basically if you die it kind of has that Souls-like thing where you have to go back and get your stuff yeah. except your former self has resurrected and so you have to fight yourself. Yeah, you have to kill like a zombie version of so yourself if you're to like, get your goods. If you're like super powered up, they're gonna have all your grenade launchers and nonsense and yep. it's, it's kind of a... And that's only $13.99 right now. Uh, Thumper is a game that you probably wouldn't normally consider a horror game. The but scariest I, rhythm game. It really is. Like, I, and I think some people would be like, that game's not scary. And I, I honestly think it is. Like, this game uh, on PSVR or this game on Switch with great headphones and sort of just like staring directly into the screen um, gives you this nightmarish tunnel vision of this sort of beetle character whipping through these kind of crazy fast tunnels um, and getting torn apart. Like when you get, when you miss something in this game, you get you get your shell ripped off. Uh, it's very brutal and very visceral. Well, I love that it's a rhythm game that's industrial. Yes. Like we always think of rhythm games and it's either, you know, it's rock band or it's like, you know, it's techno and you know, DDR stuff. It's like, oh, this is like fun, happy music. And then they're like, no, no, no. What if this was just a terrifying, like, yeah. K-hole blasting industrial music. It feels like they made, like, uh, like a, a very drugged-out video game version of that part in Willy Wonka where they're on the boat going through that tunnel. I but, like, at ten times the speed. Um, or, like, the, the end of 2001 sped up. Yeah, totally. And yeah. some of the bosses in this game are really terrifying. They're giant, giant skull monsters with tentacles and stuff like that. So definitely check this out. It's only $19.99 right now. Um, Castlevania, one of my favorite franchises of all time. Um, they are eventually going to make a new Castlevania style game called Bloodstain, but in the meantime, while that Kickstarter gem is still in development hell for a very long time, uh, Bloodstain Curse of the Moon is available right now, and it's the 8-bit throwback Castlevania game that you've been waiting for for a very long time. I dig this game. It's uh, just very tried and true NES inspired. You know, this is not like a modern Castlevania game. It's not like one of the GBA Castlevania games. This feels like old school NES Belmont game where you are whipping, you know. Uh, and it will just, birds will fly into you and yeah, kick your ass. and they'll and knock you back. And uh, the cool thing about birds. this game is you can play the whole game on very easy modes that don't have knockback for all the bats. Did they just remove all the birds and bats? No, they put them there. They just don't knock you to your death when you fall. Um, that was nice. So yeah, you'll be breaking a lot of candles and killing medusas and all sorts of nasty monsters. This game is dirt cheap right now. It's only $9.99, so check it out. Um, and finally, the mother of all scary games just launched on Nintendo Switch. It is still kicking my ass years later. Dark Souls Remastered is here for $39.99. You can check it out right now. 
Um, I don't really know how to explain this game uh, for you if you haven't played it. It's sort of like nightmarishly sadistic Zelda, uh, but with just everything it's, cranked up. It's uh, current gen Ghost and Goblins. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is a game about a rather slow moving night exploring like this incredibly twisted haunted landscape. Um, and what's cool th about this game is that it, it feels sort of open worldy in that you can start off and go in any direction. This game is brutally difficult. Um, they did not pull any punches on Switch. They didn't make some easy baby mode, uh, much to the chagrin of many people who wishes they could experience You mean I can't, I can't scan my amiibo and get like a treasure chest full of potions? You can do some of that, but it's <laughs> only gonna get you so far. Um, this is definitely a very uh, hard, heavy, hand-to-hand -hand combat game where you will fight things 10 times your size. Uh, I have nightmares about just sort of the environments in this game and some of the areas, like very early on in this game, you can run down into these catacombs where there's just like, it's just pitch black and skeletons are chasing you everywhere. And if you don't know what you're doing, it can be really disturbing and really unnerving. Um, and it's just really cool that this is on a handheld now. Uh, there's a lot of grinding that happens very mm -hmm. early on in this game. So if you want to run around a town and kill enemies while watching, you know, one of the horror movies we named earlier, uh, that's, this is a good time to do that. I actually did that while watching Apostle, and they, it was just like match nice. made in heaven. Nice. So that's Dark Souls Remastered on Switch, $39.99. Those are our favorite horror games on Switch. They will make children cry, and when they do, you can give them Mario Party and Rayman and all the other fun stuff on there. So, yeah, let us know if we missed any. I'm sure we did. Uh, we're always playing games on Switch and talking about them here on IGN. So, uh, thank you for watching. Nice. Now, we are going to get into the most divisive part of the show of the, of the week, of the year, probably in history. This is, this is like people... Yeah. Uh, 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 okay, I'll put it this way. Uh, there's, there's, there's things you don't talk about with people. It's uh, religion, politics, money, Halloween candy. Yeah. Uh, we try not to get too political on the show, but we are going to be talking about the best and worst Halloween candies, and then some that are sort of in the middle that we have mixed feelings about, yes. that we haven't really worked through ourselves, but we're going to try to do that right now. Yeah, and I, really I can promise you right now, this is the, we're going we're gonna to argue, we're going to argue with each other. That's just the way yeah. this is going to go. Okay, let's get this out of the way. It's Halloween, you're hungry for a snack, uh, you're walking around in costume, maybe you're trick-or-treating, maybe you're just at the store, you know, buying as much food as you can to binge watch. Yeah, maybe it's snack. November 2nd and you're at the back corner of CVS and you're buying all the ones with the orange stickers on them. One of the best candies Cashing in the in. world, in history, that you can do no wrong with in almost any of its iterations is Snickers. Snickers is perfect. Yeah. Well, Snickers get, is perfect. Yeah, this is not even like the top, we're not even going to do the top whatever. This is just the ones that are like, these are, these are, they're, they're, you cannot mess with these. You cannot fault them. They're fine. I will this is, say that this there, is a god tier candy. Right? There is a version of Snickers that I just recently had this weekend that I was not a fan of. They made peanut butter Snickers. What? I love peanut butter Snickers. The ones that are square. Yeah. I don't. I'm not wild about them. I think. Well, I don't think a square Snickers is enough Snickers for anybody. I think that's one of those kind of stay in your lane sort of things. It was like a little, not like the little square ones. I'm talking about right a large peanut square one. Great. It was kind of like a. It was kind of. It was kind of like a Luna bar kind of thing. That's the thing. Snickers is great. So is Reese's peanut butter cups. Yeah. You don't need to, they don't need to cross their wires or mix things up, I'm you know? I'm okay with that, I'm okay with that. Listen, let, let me tell you something. Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, we've said it before, this is probably the best, this is the best thing on earth that you could eat with your mouth, period. Period. This is just perfect. It's peanut butter and chocolate. So everyone, yeah. like, everyone keeps trying to do this. They do different ways to do this. They're like dark chocolate and Which cashew is, butter. So there's like a few different, there's different versions of them too. Yeah. There's like the, I like the little flat ones. You know, the, the, the large, the large flat, not the yeah, little, yeah. not the little fat, the little chubby ones you can also get at the bank at Christmas. Yeah, I'm not crazy about those. I think the, li the, the small, the small fat ones that sort of look like ashtrays, those are perfect. Yes, um, they the make best, new, the best ashtrays you can eat. They make new ones that where they put Reese's Pieces in them. Reese's Pieces, shout out to those. Those are fantastic too. They're like silly M&Ms. I love those things. Those are great. That is a god tier right there. Yeah. Next, let's get fruity. Yes, Skittles. Skittles. I love Skittles very much. I'm a big fan of Skittles of every variety, including the spicy ones. I'm a I, big proponent of Skittles. One time I dumped a one pound bag of Skittles into Max's hand. That was really funny. I asked, you were eating them, and I said, can I have some? And you just emptied the entire bag, and I had to go find like a bucket or something to put them all in. And Tropical I, flavor, Hawaiian Skittles, uh, silly Scandinavian, I think all their flavors are perfect. I think sour Skittles are good, but in moderation, yep. because otherwise you get holes in your tongue like you've been eating warheads. Exactly. Moving on, 100 grand. I feel like this is kind of an outlier on this list. I know that some people aren't into 100 grand. I've heard, I've heard some shade thrown that way, but again, I'm polite, and in mixed company, I don't usually start arguments about whether or not a candy is no. good. 
but this is effectively a Nestle Crunch Bar that has caramel in it, and I don't know what's wrong with your brain if you're not down with that. I'll say this. If you asked me to make a list at Easter of like great candy to eat, I wouldn't put 100 grand on the list because no one buys 100 grand. You never see 100 grand. 100 grand you only get on Halloween. You go to that weird dude's house, and he's got this weird, it looks like, you know, dilapidated spider's nest. It doesn't look great. It does kind of look like eggs. Yeah, it looks like eggs. But I think that's it's, got, it's that, got crunchies, it's got caramel, it's got milk chocolate, it's chewy as hell. It's a grand time, a mm -hmm. hundred grand time. There it is. Yeah, you, you guys feel like can a rich, have that one. I feel like a rich guy eating this. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> Uh, what I really it's like, like you have HBO just, and <laughs> you got your own car. <laughs> That's how you measure a rich guy. Yeah, having HBO in your own car. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, man. Hundred grand. Hundred grand. The candy bar of kings. It's uh, a great one. No, you you pointed you hit something important there, which is that uh, candy that you'd buy versus candy you get for free. Yeah. Hundred grand is a good Halloween candy because like it feels weird to go out and buy it. Yeah, if you're into does. that, that's fine if you can afford that sort of thing. But I, you know, I'm something of a pauper when it comes to my candy buying, and yeah. I don't know how I feel about that. On the other hand, uh, here's one that's sort of just like a good kind of candy for all seasons. Kit Kat is like perfect. It's yeah, it's perfect. It's fine. And and, and you know, like this is another one of those ones that has gone in bold, weird, dangerous places. Max, you just got back from Japan. I'm I just sure got you back ran from, into some weird stuff there. I just got back from Japan. In Japan, they. I think they have a very different understanding of Kit Kat. I don't understand what they're doing over there, but they just recently unveiled a new flavor that was like ume sake, which is like yeah. a like a plum wine. Yeah. They have like alcohol flavored Kit Kats. Basically, here in America, I feel like we're like, yeah, Kit Kat, give me a break, break me off a piece of that Kit Kat. It's a can it's a children's candy that adults can get away with because it's sort of a cookie, and you're mm -hmm. like, this is fine. Over there, they're going all sorts of crazy. Yeah. And it's like, it comes in gift boxes. It's very fancy. Yeah. They have wasabi ones. But Kit Kats are perfect. Yeah. I love getting them on Halloween. I love getting them all year. They no, that awesome. is an archetypal and, and fine candy. That's right. All right, moving on. Here's one we got in a fight with at work. We got, I hate, why would you put this on this list? Okay, no, I want to go back to the 100 grand argument. Smarties are a good Halloween candy because you're not going to go out and buy them on your own. Yeah, because you don't have pennies in your pocket. You this ever get, so hey. This is street trash. You ever get socks for Christmas? Yeah. Does it suck? No, I'm okay with it. You know what's cool about getting socks for Christmas is it means you don't have to buy socks for yourself. No one would buy Smarties. Okay, I wanted to point out there's two types of Smarties. And if you live in the UK... If you live in the UK, you're you already, have good you, Smarties. You're you, already confused by this list. Which basically tastes like ghost M&Ms. The things on the left... Like ghost these M ms Yeah, they're like hollow ghost M&Ms. What? Yeah, the things on the left, that's street chalk. That's trash. Get that out of here. Next... I just sometimes I uh, sometimes I want to eat a small sleeve of pills. I don't know what to tell you. You can eat the <laughs> here. Sour Patch Kids. This is perfect. I love Sour Patch Kids. They're great. They've they've become more sentient over the years, which I think is odd. Yeah. Um, they also have like a whole Sour Patch ecosystem. There's like watermelons and mm, like little Method Man used to advertise with them. Again, very really? odd. Yeah. These huh. things are great. They're, they're, they put out an Xbox game a few years ago. Yeah, these are like gummy bears that, try, that hurt you. <laughs> I yeah. like them a lot. I think they're a, 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 if this were a list of best movie candies, I would put them higher on the list. Yeah. We're also not really ranking them. We're just saying these are good and these are bad. I don't exactly. know. Exactly. Next, Haribo gummy bears. Halloween is a time where all these other gummy bear companies try to step to the plate and just get dunked on by the Haribo bear. Look at that dude. He is so gross. I love him so much. I don't, I don't like what's going on. He's got on his weird-ass side of his bow tie. His, his weird leg. Fresh, fruit, fruity, and chewy. These are so good. I've been to Germany, and so have you, where you get Haribo fresh. Oh, my God. It's one I'm going to be honest. I think Haribo is a year-round candy. I think Haribo has a whole... It is. There's a whole line of different great Haribo products. Yeah. You I know was what it in, says I was in Germany, and I bought Haribo Nightmare Bats, and I was like, I love bats. I'm sort of a weird, goth-brained moron. I will buy lots of these bats, and I got them home, and they were basically the fruit gummy, but with licorice wings. Yeah. I'm not really a licorice guy. I powered through it and I ate probably half a pound of gummy bats. Very anyway. Good. Very good. Def God tier candy right there. Next, Twizzlers. Twizzlers, uh, okay, this is a weird one. Uh, the long ones are weird, but on Halloween you get the small individually wrapped ones, which are just the freshest. They're fresh from the Twizzlers spout. Now, <laughs> we delicious. figured something out. We're both from the East Coast. We yeah. live in California now. Don't in start California, this red vines garbage on in me, the ca in California, Don't you dare. In California, there's a weird thing where people really like red vines. Red vines, if you're unfamiliar, is I I think what they use to wrap coaxial cable when you're running it under your house. But sometimes they cut it up and they put it in large drums and maybe your math teacher gives you one if you solved a fraction right. They're disgusting and I hate them and they taste sort of like old candles. Twizzlers are much superior but still they're kind of a really weird disappointing tube shaped candy. I'm fine not having either of them. You're an idiot. Next, nerds. 
These are great. Again, one of those things you don't buy, but you will take for free. It's a small box that you can eat the entire box of by yourself. They come in various flavors. Sometimes you get those weird split boxes that have two flavors. You get to split them up. It's a real good time. Everybody I don't know. Loves these, I sometimes will buy a large box of the Nerds that has the two different colors in there, and I'll mix them together in my yep. mouth and then get cotton mouth from it. Yeah, fish rocks for the face. Yes. Nerds. Aqu Next. Aqu Aquarium gravel of kings. Weird yeah. ass candy that's kind of good. Yeah. Let's do this. Okay. Butterfinger. What are you, dude? You Somebody like just got outraged in the comments because because there's an odd defense for us for Butterfinger butter candy Butterfingers are great. The Simpsons knew that for many years when they advertised them. But butter, Butterfingers also sort of tastes like sugar glass covered in chocolate. That's a good point. Right? It, it's got a shardy, sugar glassy, meaty, it's mealy. It's definitely a shardy candy. Yeah. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It tastes it. like mica. Yeah. The, the mineral. I love it. I love it. it when, when, it's okay. When, when Shaquille O'Neal used to break the backboards back in the 90s NBA, they used to sweep <laughs> them up, cover them in chocolate, and make Butterfingers. <laughs> Next, Heath Bar. What the hell are you, dude? I don't even know what you are. Heath Bar is like a, that's like, like my mom used to eat this. My mom is like 75 years old or something. Look at this dude. Like he's he's this flat is, as hell. He's named after a fireplace. What the hell are you? Heath is like a, that's like a Dickensian manor. Like, right? It's like, oh, yes, Charles and I are going out on the Heath. In our carriage, right? This is this is like a candy bar for smokers. I think this was. I think they invented this during Prohibition as an alternative to drinking rum in basements. It looks I like don't you, know. It looks like you steamroll the Snickers. It's like Again, ninety percent toffee. It's pure sugar. This will mess your mouth up. This but is I love also it. great if you smash it up with a hammer and roll it into ice cream. Yeah, okay. really good. Perfect. Hit it with a hammer. Airheads. Uh, Airheads. I'm a huge Airheads proponent. I love Airheads candy. I think they're great. These are weird as hell. I don't know what it is. I think they're made of balloons. <laughs> My mom had like a, a piggy bank growing up on her on her dresser, and I used to go in and steal dimes out of that, and go to the video store and buy like way too many Airheads. And then she's like, "Where are you getting the money for all these? I've been stealing from you, mother." Mm -hmm. I love Airheads. I I still don't know what white mystery is supposed to taste like. Do you know? No. <laughs> Sorry, I sneezed. My mustache made me sneeze. It's very weird. It's very tickly in my face. Next. Oh man. Okay, here we are. I don't. Are we no. doing this? No, you put them on the list. Did I? I hate these things. You. This list was like five things long when we started it, and we're probably. I don't even know. It's hard to read a watch okay. with an iPad. Candy on. corn. Some of you like it. Some of you don't. Hey, I wish you'd all kill each I other. I just don't want to kink shame. If you like it, that's fine. I once put candy corn on my on my teeth to look like a Dracula, and then my teeth hurt for two days after that. Yeah. I don't recommend doing that. Yeah. Also, what do there you think you about the candy pumpkins? I don't know. I feel like this. if this is one of those like Oscars in memoriam things, we would get to Candy Corn and it would be like, oh, the guy that directed, uh, you know, <laughs> Air Bud 3. Yeah, you're like, oh, okay. like, It's like, yeah, oh, well, good put, work. It but put, candy Corn puts in work. All right, I'll give it next. that. Whoppers. These weird hollow BBs that some people <laughs> like. I don't know what's up with these, They're man. sort of like a, like a secular Butterfinger egg. These like, things, they, don't have the, they don't have the peanut butter going on, but they're definitely got the shardy fiberglass <laughs> feeling. Yep. These things are weird as hell. You bite into them and you're like, was that it? You ever suck on one and it feels like it's decaying in your mouth? <laughs> it's so odd. It's very strange candy. I don't. Also, I don't like that they come in milk cartons. Yep. That's Next. A, okay. Payday. What happened? That's a that's a candy for parents. They, what the hell is this? This is like if you walked in on a candy bar and it was changing. You saw yeah, it naked. Exactly. I feel like there was. This is like if you could trick a horse into put some chocolate this. on there or just get peanuts. I don't. What know. are you? I'm not wild about paydays. Yeah, this is I'll like. I'll still eat them because I'm sometimes hungry for candy. Right. This is like a, a Snickers at a nude beach. I think of cab drivers when I see paydays. <laughs> it's, it's weird as hell. It smells funky too. Okay. Tootsie rolls. These Tootsie things rolls suck. are a cl ah. No, they suck. You don't eat them. No, they. What I, do you mean you I don't like eat them? The, I like the long ones. I like the long cat turd looking ones. I okay. don't know how I feel about the little like child's thumb I ones. Want, I want to give a big a big middle finger to to <laughs> footsies or fruitsies, the blue ones that taste like you know cigars. The, the blue ones are vanilla. They also have like weird like. There's like lemon milk. Yeah, it's just candles for children to, to eat. Robitussin. <laughs> Next. I don't, I don't All right. Those weird beat up ass pretzel bags. It's just basically How dust. How is that weird but good? Well, people give out Halloween pretzels. What the hell is a Halloween pretzel? And they're shaped like spiders and stuff like that. But the time you get them, they're just crushed. It's just like salt and, and, and bread. Yeah, it's just this bag of salty crumbs. You can go home and do some panko crusting at your home. All right, we've done enough uh, sort of... It's, like centrist, uh, you know, both sides in here. Yeah. But like, let's move on to the ones that, that are really just garbage. Yeah, candies. let's get, let's angry get into it. Let's get angry. We're, we're going to be talking about the bad candies. And if you want to apologize for these candies, that's fine. Yeah, you can you get... still eat them. We won't fault you. But these ones are about to be very bad. I understand we're going to piss off a lot of people here. And I don't. If care. anybody's watching internet content in 2018 and is upset that we are saying that sugar daddy and sugar babies are bad candies, I don't know what to tell you. This the stuff ship is... has sailed. It is the 21st century. We are well into it. 
This stuff is disgusting. Get on your penny farthing bicycle and go to the dentist. This is, what is that? That thing at the bottom is disgusting. It looks like duck turd on a stick. And then the thing above it, they, those are sugar babies and sugar daddy, respectively. Um, they, it's both like, it's, it's named after They're a weird, horrible. It's, it's a weird like rich guy that pays you to sleep If you like him. sugar babies and sugar daddy, you probably also enjoy sugar packets at your favorite family restaurant. Yeah. Just eat them and, off uh, the table. And if you have a problem with that, you can say it to our faces because it'll be funny to hear you talk with no teeth. Oh. Not because we'll knock them out, but because these sugar things did already. All right. Next. The only, the only candy factory I've ever visited was the Neko factory, and I think I blocked that out of my memory because it was too depressing. Real talk, I got to put a picture of Altoids here, and you guys would be like, yeah, same deal. I told you to put sidewalk chalk because you <laughs> couldn't find a clear enough picture of these because they are from the Great Depression or earlier. Yeah. Actually, I think these are older than that. They're just, they're coins. You can, If you want to wreck a vending machine, you can <laughs> shove some of these little licorice tums in there and yep. ruin it. All right. Next, Dots. Actually, you suck. Yeah. You These suck are, so okay. bad. I'm, yeah, no, you're right. I don't know what's going on at, Toots, at the Tootsie Company in general with no, Jesus Dots. These are the, yeah, these are like Tootsie Skittles, but they mm -hmm. also make those Fruitsies. I don't even, these are not good. Oh, they're gu they're gumdrops, but they decided to brand them. These are only good if you're making a gingerbread house. So why yeah. are you having them at Halloween? You just want to save them? They also come in a lot of weird varieties, we learned this. Yeah. There's yep. a lot of different different kinds. There's all right, let's, like, let's speed around through the rest of these. All right, fine. Mounds, disgusting. What is that? It's just shrapnel covered in chocolate. It's gross. It's like the it's coconut shards. It, it tastes like strings. I think if you're a big fan of coconut, you don't need to tell anybody about that. That's your business. Yeah, eat that alone behind your house. <laughs> <laughs> Hot tamales. <laughs> hey, everyone. You want some divisive-ass cinnamon <laughs> to eat? You want some of these? I don't know. Yeah, these are not great. Mike and Ikes that fight you. <laughs> if you really want to ruin someone's day, put out a bunch of Mike and Ikes and then sprinkle hot tamales in there so it's sort of like a Russian roulette scenario. Exactly. God, God they're not even hot. They're tastes just like mouthwash. They're just crappy cinnamons. Next. Double bubble. This is the only time you see this. They've only, you know they made double bubble in 1866, and that was the last time they made them? This is all they have. And also, they run out of flavor in 10 seconds. I don't want gum on Halloween. I will throw this at your house. <laughs> Next, Hershey Kisses. Hershey Kisses are great, but not the individually wrapped ones, because they get all unfurled, and you get all weird dust and parts of your yeah, Halloween costume at the like, top. I'll, I'll meet you halfway for hugs, but yeah. kisses, no thank you. That's, that's fine. That's Next. all right. Good and plenty. You said you like these. I don't, I'm going to throw you under the bus here. You said you like these. I like them, but not on Halloween. Good for health, bad for education. Don't you love licorice pills? Yes. These are awful. Next. Terrible. Raisinets, get out of here. This the, is the, the wolf in sheep's clothing. <laughs> it's riddled with fruit antioxidants. Yes, yep. antioxidants, the one thing I'm looking for in my Halloween candy when I'm trick-or-treating. Also, I turned 32 on Monday. I'm probably not trick-or-treating. And finally, Laffy Taffy. Uh, these are good when they're fresh, which has literally never happened most, in history. Most of the time, you start to peel them off, and the wrapper gets stuck to them, yeah. and you only get half of a child's joke, and you're probably stuck with banana. Yep. I think blue raspberry is good. These are fine if they're in the large bar, but again, who's giving those out on Halloween? They taste like plastic because that's what's all over them, and that's what gets inside your if mouth. If you want like a good, king-size, fresh Laffy Taffy bar, go to Elon Musk's house, because he's the only guy who can afford those. You're better off eating the pencils or weird spider rings that end up in Yeah, have bag. a nice football eraser. It's exactly. probably fresh than that Laffy Taffy. Uh, anyway, we are very lucky to work here at IGN, a <laughs> wonderful place that employs us and allows us to do stupid things like we just did. But we are not the only people that work here at IGN. Uh, and because it's Halloween, we decided to invite the entire staff, or at least those who decided to show up in costume, onto our set today to show off their Halloween costumes. Uh, and we don't know how this is going to go. We just basically sent an email to the whole company, and we said, hey, come join us. So let's, let's see how this unfolds. Starting with... No, 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 over there in the over corner. There, not over there, over there. Go there. There, there we, we go. go. All right, where's your other half? He's somewhere. Mike, okay, Mike is one half of, what is it, Team Rocket? Uh, Rainbow Rocket. Rainbow Rocket. Rainbow Rocket. Okay. Excellent work. You look fantastic. I dig it, yeah. Yes. All right. <laughs> oh, you got the, the, the nice sock arms us, and everything. Yeah. Excellent work. It'd be cool if like we had some music or something, but we don't. <laughs> we so don't have music. really awkward. Money's too tight for music. Exactly, we ran out of it. We spent you all great. Thank you so art. much. No all right. Okay. Up right. next. Who's next? Who do we have? Come on out here. Okay. We've got Mark Medina here who's wearing a fetching Clarice Starling costume from the hit film Silence of the Lambs. No, I'm Winner Burt Macklin. Burt Macklin? <laughs> no, I think you're Clarice Starling. You're going to track down that no good Buffalo Bill and then befriend that lovely Hannibal Lecter. I, I like those aviators. That's a good look. Yeah. Thanks. All Burt right. Macklin. Thank all you right. so much. Next up. What do we got here? Come on out here. What in the... What the... What do you, okay, Payday, the heist? Excellent, okay. yeah, you, that's a very scary mask. Is that made from real pumpkin? It's, it, it's 
Human. It's, it's human, human skin. Human terrorist pumpkin. Everyone loves the human skin to All right. wear on I think Halloween. That, I think that airsoft gun was just in the corner of the office. We have a strange workplace mm -hmm. here. That's how, Jordan actually wears that vest to work every day, which is very terrifying. All right, here's a good one. Android 19, come on out. Android 19, no, Android 21, I'm sorry. Android 19 is the fat French clown. Here we go. From Dragon Ball Fighters, a brand new Akira Toriyama original who is going to turn into a Majin Buu at some point. Those, that is a fantastic costume. Can we see nice your one. shoes? Your shoes are the best part of this. I don't think we can, can we see the shoes? There we go. Enhance. All right. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Yes, that is awesome very work, good. Ginger. <laughs> Thank next? you so much. Come on out. Show us it's Finn from Adventure Time with a bat, with a, oh, I thought it was a bat. I'm wearing an iPad. I love so. this costume. This, this costume is, is fantastic. This is good. Keeping it simple. Low this key. feels like it's stuff you could have worn any day of the, of the week, and you just you put the hat on. That's oh, a great sword, too. Right. That's <laughs> a, nice yeah. work. That's the thing that not enough people kind of take into account, is that sometimes costumes need to be comfortable. Yes, very comfortable. Thank you so much. Who do we have next? Is that, is that, my, is that one of my top five favorite animals? Are you serious? Maybe. The, the giraffe? The giraffe? Giraffes are amazing animals. I didn't know that was a top five animal of yours. It's a horse, but taller. You That's look fair, fantastic. Right? Well done. Well done. <laughs> very good. That's very comfortable, I, I imagine, right? Oh, yeah. Can you... If you wear sunglasses, Pockets, you can fall perfect. asleep at your You desk. can wear that every day of the week. You don't even need to wait for Halloween. There we go. Oh, it's a sleepy giraffe. I love that. Nice. All Thank right, who's, you. who's next? Do we have anyone else? Come on out here. I think we have a lot of people. I can't... I mean, they're standing in the dark over there. Wow, that is an awesome costume. Thank you. Oh, my God. Did you make that? No, I did not. <laughs> you could lie and just say, yes, I was up sewing all night. Are you a specific character or a witch? No, I'm not. Just a, a, a goth. Sort of gothic Lolita witch. A goth, okay, a gothic Lolita witch. Yes. I can allow, I'll allow that. I love it. <laughs> all right, next. Thank you so much. Oh, it's one of the, the meth friends from the, the AMC show. All right. Yeah. There he is. The drug dance. Fresh yeah. off of a great cook. Oh, you got the oh, shit and everything. Good lord. How's it going, Heisenberg? What's up? Say my name. Uh, like eight years ago. <laughs> I don't think we're... This exact costume, but I had hair, so I was Jesse. The cool thing is if you're, oh. if, you're, if you're laying drywall, you can wear that costume as well. It's handy. That's what it's for. Yeah. All right, who's up next? Well, you either die a Jesse or live long enough to become a Heisenberg. Yeah. The Spaceman. Oh, that is a great outfit. I love the aviators. That is very nice. I went over the way to Space Camp. That's, uh, space camp was one of my favorite things in elementary school, and now I want to go back. What do you keep in the pockets? Spa uh, space food? Yeah, astronaut ice cream? Actually, I, have, I have spare patches. I got my Twitter handle. Oh, nice. I also have my actual name. Wow. To... There that's we a whole, go. That's a whole, a whole ordeal. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. What do I have in my pouch? All I have in my pouches is old paper. That's okay. I just have crumpled up uh, grocery bags. All right, here we go. What is this one? The, we got the My Hero Academia. What's, that? What's his name? Deku. 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 I, I love you. This is a fantastic. I came costume. in and watched that freaking show. Made, you made this, right? You shaved your you shaved your mustache for this. I shaved my whole beard. And this sounds like an insult, but your mom helped you with this costume. Yeah, well, in the show, Deku's mom makes his costume, so it's canon. Oh. Okay. So she like literally makes costumes for a living. That's great. I love the pouches too. What what do you keep in there? Candy bars. Uh, I got gloves. The gloves come off, so I can like actually work. <laughs> okay. All right. Nice work. All right. Next this is up, great. Who do great we Great clogs too. <laughs> Hey, there's no smoking in here. This is you're gonna set off the fire alarms. <laughs> this is fantastic. Tell us about your costume. Uh, this is from Netflix's new show Maniac. Oh, uh, nice! Wow, oh, that's a that's a bra that's a brand new costume. Yeah, totally. That there is great. That is one of the most topically fresh costumes we've had in here. <laughs> Fun fact: my bangs are fake. They uh, are or they aren't? They fake, are fake bangs. They are. Yeah, I like twisted them on your side. Oh, you could have tricked us. That's right. fantastic. Thank, Thank you for not lighting that cigarette in here. Oh, yes. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Oh my god, it's Donkey Kong. What in the hell? Diddy Kong, I'm coming over there. I don't I think know. I get a picture can, with you. Can we? <laughs> There's parts of this costume yeah. I don't think you should see. Um, <laughs> it's very revealing, but uh, you, look, you look great. Yeah, Thank I, you. I, I, yeah. I think we can see. Very we, serious double take while wearing an eye patch. Don't, don't tilt that camera any further down, please. Yeah, I think we can see your banana. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for, there it is! Very nice, there it is. <laughs> Thank you. All right, who's next? Casey, is that you? Yeah, that's me. Oh right. yeah, Casey DeFritis. I've blown your cover. Oh man. As Morgana yeah. from, from Persona. Codename Mona. Yeah. Mona. Persona 5. There we go. This is one of Andrew Goldfarb's favorite games of all time, obviously one of yours too. Do you have a tail? I do, I do have a tail. That's great, is it, is it, has it gotten stuck in doors? Uh, I've got almost stuck in the car this morning. <laughs> 
<laughs> awesome. Well, I'm glad you made it onto the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Nice. Who else, Who we, else got? do we have? Oh no, no, no! It's Waluigi. No, there he is. Can we get a wah? Wah! <laughs> wah! <laughs> Thank you, Zach. It's really been weird hearing you guys comparing notes on what it's like to wear overalls it's in very 2018. Odd. Oh man, this Nightwing. is fantastic! Look at that. Did you? How did you? Joe, did, is that is that comfortable or is it? Um, I mean, in some parts, not in all parts. Doesn't look like it breathes great. How do you pee? Uh, so it zips in the back. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know how women do this, but you have to like reach back there, pull it down. Then yeah. Someone else yep. to, like zip it up. Like uh, the the mask is awesome too. Yeah, yeah, it's glued on. I can smell the glue, so I'm kind of high right now. <laughs> Good luck peeling that off. That'll, yep. be, that'll be interesting. Thank you very much. Thank all right, who's next? What in the hell? Are you? That's a this is Amanda Medina, uh, aka Ryan Duncan, who is uh, one of our production coordinators here I love at we're, we're, Yeah, this this makes more sense if you work here. Yeah. Again, to get him to come in. You also could just be like a guy that just started a company in San Francisco. Yeah. 100%. This is like San Francisco that. camouflage. Yeah. You blend in perfectly. I have, Excellent like, work. Six there we go. Yeah. There's a lot of plaid and mustaches in this, in this thank place. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think, I think that's everybody. Right, that's everybody. Okay. Uh, that was the Up at Noon Halloween special. We had uh, more stuff to show you, but I guess we'll have to wait because we ended up yelling about candy for do 20 we, minutes. We did yell about candy for a while. We don't have time for this. We got like, what, we have, do we have two minutes? Do we have? No. We're, now, we're out of time. Yeah, we're out all of right. time. All right. So thank you all for tuning in and joining us. This was really fun. Uh, I don't. Do we know when we're going to be back at all? Uh, we will be back ish soon. Someday. So Someday. If, one if of you these like days. Up at Noon, follow us on Twitter. I'm at Asian Bizzle, he's at Max Scoville, uh, and we will let you know exactly when we're returning. Yeah. And a huge thanks to Resident Evil 2 for sponsoring this and letting us do our spooky Halloween nonsense. Yeah, uh, up next is a very special IGN Plays Live starring Jackie Jing. She will be running around San Francisco live playing Ghostbusters World, which is effectively uh, the ghost version of Pokemon Go. Uh, she'll be ru running around Golden Gate Park trying to catch ghosts, which there are several of. I think she's going to be in Golden Gate Park, and there's all sorts of people in that park who are already chasing things that aren't there. I That's wonder true. if anything will get weird. <laughs> uh, let's take a look and uh, stick around, and happy Halloween, everybody. Thank you for watching. Jackie Jing here with IGN and we are in San Francisco at the Golden Gate Park playing Ghostbusters World. It is a gorgeous day out, perfect situation for playing this game. So let's get to it and find some ghosts. Do, 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 do. All right, and we already have three around us. I like this little red dude. Let's go after him. Willow the Wisp Fire. By the way, this is Mark. Say what's up, Mark. He's helping me out here. I guess you guys can't really